I'm Microsoft teaming with Microsoft Teams. I'm learning and dreaming with Microsoft Teams. The hub and the teamwork of Microsoft 365 in these four amazing times. I'm Microsoft teaming with Microsoft Teams. Yeah, with Microsoft Teams. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Inside Microsoft Teams. I'm your host, Stephen Rose, and thanks for joining us this week. We have a really interesting guest. We have AEG. Now, if you're going, who's AEG? AEG is the world's largest owner of sports teams and sports events and the world's second largest presenter of live music and entertainment events. Just to give you an idea what that means, every year they support over 160 million guests that go to 22,000 live events. Things like big events like Coachella and things like that. They sell 50% of all the tickets sold worldwide in the top 10 arenas, things like uh, the Staples Center and the O2 Arena. They own over 50 different sports franchises or host them, uh, which includes teams like the LA Kings. And in short, if you've been to a concert, a sporting event, chances are AEG was involved. Now, what's really great about AEG is they are super focused on transforming to create a deeper fan experience. They're using tools like Power BI and Teams. They're using Surface Hubs in, uh, in conference rooms and Surface in uh, devices in the ticketing areas and leveraging uh, Microsoft 365 all up to better connect with artists and partners and their own staff. And we're gonna show you some really cool examples of that. And I am very excited to introduce Bill Martin, who is the CIO. Hi, Bill, welcome and thanks for joining Thank us you. today. Ah, glad to be here. Absolutely, take a moment, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, but Bill Martin, I'm the CIO for AEG Corporate, so overseeing um, the, the various business units, uh, all the technology, security, uh, cybersecurity, infrastructure, architecture. I've uh, been here five years, and uh, we're uh, going through some some interesting times through the pandemic with live events, and uh, it's, a, it's been a challenge, but uh, Microsoft Teams has really helped us bring it home. So we're going to take a little trip back. We're going to go back to 2016 when Adele's Hello was the top hit. And you and your team saw Cloud Vision. You, at that point, started to move from on-prem and then to the cloud to move forward. And like many of our customers and things that I talked about for a long time back on the OneDrive team, which is get those share drives into SharePoint, get rid of that X drive, move those files um, from the desktop and from local drives into OneDrive. So that was that was really your start. What sort of prompted it at that time? Because people were still, eh, I don't know about the cloud. We have a lot of um, money that we put into infrastructure. What sort of prompted that at that time? Well, in 2016, when I arrived at AEG, we had a lot of software as a service in place already. And our ERP system, which is what most companies still have on-prem because it's so difficult to move it, mm -hmm. uh, was already effectively cloud-based for us because it belonged to our ownership group uh, out of Denver. And so to us, that was another cloud app uh, from a pure business perspective. So what remained was some, some basic business applications, a data warehouse, uh, all of our office productivity software. It was all running on-prem and it just didn't make any sense because that's one of the cleaner things to move uh, right. in 2016. So we built a strategy around it, said, let's go do this. And frankly, it was also a security pl play because by getting there, we could make our entire uh, enterprise more secure. So we embarked on that in 2016, and I'm happy to say that in December of 2019, we shut down the corporate data center for wow. AG. And talk about timing, you know, three months later, everybody was working from home, and uh, that was a godsend for us. It almost it almost made us prophetic wow. uh, in, in, our, in our, our approach. And, and, you know, before that, you had, you had taken on Teams and started to use Teams, and you had found some cool ways to use it. You had uh, partnered with the LA Kings for, a, for a, a rollout, and there was a campaign video with the jersey. Talk about some of the things that you started to use Teams for pre-pandemic. Yeah, we, we're spread out across Southern California. We got a lot of different offices. We have our main headquarter offices at LA Live. We're in a building a few blocks away from there. We're in another building a five blocks south of there. We got people down at the Toyota Sports Center down in El Segundo. We've got mm -hmm. the LA Galaxy at Dignity Health Sports Park and and uh, in Carson. So we're kind of spread all over the place. So 
on those uh, really, really hot summer days, we were starting to leverage teams to say, you know what, I'm not going to take a 10, a 10 or 12 block walk in the 103 degree heat. <laughs> um, I'll join you remotely from my office yeah. uh, for this 30 minute uh, conversation. Uh, and the video capability of Teams, which unlike Skype, which is really kind of where we were in 2016, but then we quickly adopted Teams as it came out, mm-hmm. uh, it was kind of native. Um, you know, Skype was still a little quirky. Um, yeah. Not a lot of people liked it, uh, but Teams just seemed to just work. Um, and for for you know business users, everyday uh, business right. users, they just they just liked it. That's awesome. So uh, yeah, we started using it. Uh, not as much as we certainly as we did in the pandemic. I, when the pandemic started, we saw a one thousand percent increase in Teams meetings, literally overnight. Yeah, um, yeah, and we were chatting about this earlier, and just you saw what so many companies did, which is this massive just everybody's now at home and everybody's switching in. But you had a great quote. You said that um, you know that Teams is the gift that keeps giving, and the fact that you got in early did that what did you mean by that well because we were uh, we adopted it early um we were able to provide feedback on you know our experience with the tool and that drove some of the the enhancements that were coming through teams and it, the intent the enhancements seem to be coming like every week yeah you know the, okay we're going to do go from two by two to three by three and then the three by three became you know nine by nine and yeah you know, so then we go to the large gallery and it's funny today you know, I've, I've thrown together a few screenshots to share. And as I looked at some of those early screenshots that we took from a year ago, I was I was kind of surprised that, you know, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, we, we couldn't do that back then. Right. Uh, because we're, we're just so used to using the, the more enhanced features and sure. uh, some of the call outs and uh, screen sharing and some of the uh, breakout rooms. And, you know, the, all of these features just kept, kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. And so, yeah, it was the gift that kept on giving because it it just kept getting better and better and better, which kept our business users across all of our different business units engaged because they they, they kept seeing it improve, improve, improve. And nobody wanted to jump off. Which is great. One of the things that you did early, which is something that, you know, we've talked about on previous shows, it is so important that your second step after pilot is adoption and driving adoption and that that has to start from the top down if your leadership isn't using the tool isn't turning on their cameras isn't leveraging more than just the chat function no one else will either and we've seen companies where they go yeah 80 percent of our users are using teams what are they using it for chat and that's it (laughs) so the president of staples center uh, you had said it's just a great user of teams that he shows up on video which forces everybody else to turn theirs on so how did you how did you make that happen? What was, was that just, was it natural? Did it just sort of happen or was it a conversation and planned out from the top down on how that was going to work? Well, with Lee at Staples Center, it just happened. Um, Lee likes to see people. He likes to be with people. And when he started having his his large, uh, his, he has a very large team running Staples Center because there's so many events run through through Staples, um, at four anchor tenants and the whole thing. But he he immediately started having teams meetings and he was on video and uh he would wear you know these crazy t-shirts from time to time and he would have a t-shirt that said you're on mute and every time somebody started to talk that were on mute he would just take a shirt and pick it up yeah exactly that's awesome love it so uh, but he if you weren't on video he'd call you out that's great because he wanted to see you yeah. um and uh that just lee uh lee's just a, a very uh, boisterous, uh, old school kind of guy who wants to look you in the eye, and and that's exactly what he did. And it creates a connection, which is so important, and that's something we keep talking about, which is you can't really create a connection if everybody's on mute and doing that. It really is sort of that back and forth okay. that recreates not just that togetherness, but also some of those water cooler moments that happen when okay. you pass each other in the hall. Uh, you, you, I know that you brought a few screenshots of going through that evolution. I'd love for you to share those. And then I want to come back and kind of talk about, um, you know, how you kind of went through this deployment process. But let, let, let's take a look at those screenshots. So let, you, I think you brought us four. Let's take a look at the earliest one. Yeah, this is one of the, our, our very earliest meetings, and in fact, some some of the folks that are that are on here aren't with us anymore. Uh, this this was from like April of 2020, 
one of our first team gatherings that we brought people together. And you can kind of see from the, the meeting chat on the side there, does anybody have suggestions on how not to get cabin fever when yeah. you're working from home? Yeah, regular dog walks, cut your grass. You know, this was, um, and then there was some joking, you know, what, hey, Sheena, what's that, what sandwich are you eating? And, you know, that's not a sandwich. Yeah. So it's just a lot of you know, banter back and forth. Yeah. And we've continued to do this at least once a week for a while. We were doing it twice a week, just bringing the whole team together, just as, as a gathering, answering yeah. questions, you know, providing feedback on things. And creating uh, a comfort level while doing that, which yeah. is key. Yeah. Yeah, because we when we were in the office, we would we would bring everybody together on the floor, uh, you know, once a week, every Friday afternoon, we just come together and people would ask questions and we chat and this was our way of continuing to do that. The next one here is uh, we have employee network groups, mm -hmm. and this is actually a parenting employee network group. And it was right at the beginning of the meeting, and you can see some of the dialogue that's going uh, down the side here. You know, I jumped in because, you know, I'm a father of four, although, you know, my youngest was at the time was 17. She's 18 now and she'll be 19 in another month. But you can see that this was parents sharing with other parents, you know, how are they dealing with, you know, being stuck at home? Sure. Um, the next one here, this was, you know, later. This there's was a big December. change. Yeah, there's a, a pretty significant teams change here. This was the division that I work for. Mm -hmm. uh, this is called Global Support Services. And this was our holiday gathering and everybody came together and did different holiday backgrounds. And um, we we did a series of holiday games virtually. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was it was a lot of fun. And uh, we were on this for about 90 minutes wow. uh, playing a variety of games. And everybody, as you can see, is smiling and, and just really having a having a good yeah. time. As, or and the emojis space. are flying and different yeah. news. And I got to say that Richard is my new best friend because he, like myself, agrees that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. So yes. I, I appreciate him and must meet him at some point. <laughs> now, this is awesome. But you had also, we had talked about how during, like, for example, a Lakers game, this is being yep. used to connect with all the different folks in the house. So kind of walk through what's going sure. on here. Yeah, this is a cross section of the. You know, we, there was a Lakers Toronto's event. Uh, this is really just from about ten days ago, and this gives you an idea of how the Staples Center team has totally adopted teams. There are about sixty or seventy people on this teams channel, and this is you know here's the Lakers versus Toronto event notes. Uh, you have a series of people here talking about okay here's. Uh, if we got any spotlight recognitions, uh, here's the link to go get the spotlight recognition. Uh, the teams are in the red zone. The red zone, which is the area on the floor the, to protect the players, red zone is active. Uh, that's the way of you know getting that word out immediately to everybody in the operations team. The red zone is active. Uh, just, everybody's got to uh, you know pay attention to that protocol now. And then you got the, the codes of, you know, the, all the Lakers players are 97. I'm not going to pretend to know what 97 means, but I know there's a, that's a code to say they have arrived, they've departed, right. they're, they're in the practice uh, realm, they're on the court doing their private session, right. what, whatever it is. And, and what's um, really great here is, unlike sharing this via radio, if someone comes in late, they can scroll through this, they can search yep. this, they can find what's already being done, they can immediately get caught up. Or if there was an issue, you can review, take a look at that timeline and see where those mistakes were being made. So that level of documentation yep. helps to really understand what's happening. If there was a mistake, what didn't happen, or if everything went right, what did we do right? And how do we reproduce that and have documentation behind that, which is great and maybe a way that a lot of people have not thought about using that. And you guys like to have fun and you guys are using one of my favorite third party plugins, Kahoot. So talk about what, what you're doing with that. And for those who don't know it, go check it out. Kahoot is a really cool app that plugs beautifully into Teams. But how are you using it? Uh, every week, uh, my group comes together and I build a Kahoot or I grab a Kahoot from you know, Kahoot has a lot of uh, ones available. But the, the favorite one that we do is uh, Name That Tune. And we'll pull the songs right off of YouTube or uh, Vimeo and um, you, you know, play 20 seconds of the song. And then the fastest person to answer gets the most points. And we'll do 20, 25 questions. This particular coot had 21 uh, different pop songs. And uh, you use a mobile device to uh, click on the right answer. So we broadcast this, this screen to the left via Teams, via screen share, and play the music through uh, Teams uh, with the video. 
and then uh, the, everybody responds using their mobile device by punching in a, a key code at the beginning of the game. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's pretty effective. Yeah, it gets people engaged and paying attention and having fun. And it's just one of those things that you can do during the pandemic to be able to connect with people and to have fun experiences, even though you're separate. Really cool stuff. I want to come back and I want to talk about how um, you were able to create some not only new opportunities, but some of the lessons learned from rolling out teams. Before we do that, I want to take a quick look at some new teams hardware and then we'll come right back with Bill and continue. Today, we're taking a look at the Poly Studio 15. And you're like, I already have a webcam. Why do I need another webcam? Well, you know, it's 4K, it's, you know, 16 by 9 ratio and all that. And we'll get into all the specs later. But what really sets this apart is the fact that it is going to find me in the frame and it's automatically going to zoom in and center me. If there's two people, it's going to go back and forth between us. And I think as you are looking to connect with people, which is what we want to do, whether we're doing a meeting, whether we're doing a webcast or we're doing a live event, that ability to have the camera automatically frame you, to zoom in and out and to follow you really helps you to not just be yourself, but to connect with the audience. I love the fact that this device puts the focus on me. Like I said, the sound quality is great. It's a 16 by 9 4K. So let's jump in, take a deeper look at the specs for the Poly Studio 15. So one of the things I talked about was this integrated lens. And one of the things I like about it is you'll notice that light is on. As soon as I turn that, I can see now the lens is closed and the light is out. So I know that no apps are currently uh, accessing my webcam or being able to use it until I turn it back on. So let's take a closer look at the hardware. So I can see here on the back, I have two USB-A ports. So these can be used either to directly plug in a headset or I can use it like a USB hub. I can see my USB-C adapter, power, and where that Kensington lock goes. I also really like here that this is all rubberized, so it's going to grip well to any monitor, no matter how big, or even a TV if you wanted to. I can put it here, and if that's at the wrong angle, all I simply have to do is take that back piece and adjust it. Tail the tape. Poly Studio 15 has a 4K image sensor, 16 by 9 at 21 by 60 p that great auto framing that I really like, and that integrated shutter where you can just twist it to go ahead and turn that camera off to make sure no one's spying on you. Three microphones, full duplex audio, noise block, and acoustic fence, that Poly Lens Management app for those of you who are going to be managing multiple devices, or the Poly Lens app for the individual choices that I showed you. Works on both Windows and Mac, and it supports the Kensington lock. So if you need to lock it down on multiple devices. To learn more, go out to poly.com and just click on the Poly Studio P15. So I'm back with Bill from AEG. And one of the other great things that came out of this unexpectedly was being able to get more opportunities because you work with companies globally all over the world for naming rights and things like that. And you had to rethink how business was done instead of hopping on planes and meetings and lunches and all this. How did that change how you work? And were you able to stay as successful doing things that were one-to-one -one via Teams? We absolutely were. And um, luckily for us, one of the very first uh, sponsorship deals that we were working on at the time that everybody went home for the pandemic was one that was technology oriented. So I was very involved as was several of the members of my team. Um, and because it was a technology oriented one, we were able to help the global partnerships team adopt teams to continue those, those negotiations, the conversations, the follow-up, uh, the activations, all of those things that were associated with a sponsorship deal. And we closed a multi-million dollar, you know, a very long-term deal in May that wow. I think everybody, at, at, when we all went home in March, thought, well, we'll have to just put this on ice. Um, and we didn't. Uh, in fact, we were able to move it forward. And because it involved one of our venues, um, we were actually able to uh, a allow that technology company to come into the venue because it was dark, which it never is. Yeah. Um, and they were able to Im implement a lot of the technology as part of the sponsorship agreement while the venue was dark. And if we hadn't been able to close the deal, we would have sat on ice for a year until we could wow. get people to the venue. And 
And then they wouldn't have been able to do the work because the venue would have been busy again. Right. So, uh, yeah. it, it just really, really worked out really well. And uh, uh, it really uh, generated from that a whole series of negotiations with other potential sponsorship partners, both technology and non-technology oriented, because the team got really, really comfortable having these one-to-one and one-to-many conversations with uh, potential sponsors. Wow. So let's talk about some of the lessons learned. Change management and getting management on board. How important was it and how early was that a piece of the puzzle for you in looking at a successful deployment? I go all the way back to 2016. And uh, when we implemented uh, Office 365, now Microsoft 365, and that's actually pre-Teams even, Mm -hmm. um, we brought in a a third-party Microsoft VAR to help us uh, with, with the transition. And the idea was have somebody that can help us do a couple of what we refer to as waves of transition. Could we go after one one organization at a time and move, depending on the size of that organization, multiple waves uh, to the cloud? Mm -hmm. And they did the first two. Then they watched us do two waves. And then they left and we did the rest. Um, And there were 38 waves, I think. (laughs) Wow. So, but once we got going, sure. uh, you know, and understood, okay, here's a really great process. But at the very beginning, at our kickoff meeting with uh, the, the the consulting company, I asked for for one business card from all of the guys sitting around the table. I said, you know, who's change management? Right. Because yours is the business card I want. Wow. Um, and it kind of it, it kind of stirred the pot a little bit, I think, because everybody else was, but well, why are you so focused on that? And have the experience that I've had in transitions, change management is makes it a winner or a loser. Oh, absolutely. Um, and 100%. so we put all of our emphasis. In fact, we spent as much money on change management um, and training and everything else as we did on the entire project. Wow. Um, so it was, but it was money well spent. When we went home uh, for the pandemic, within a week, the CEO was having his management committee meeting via Teams. And that was a meeting that was always live. Sure. We, we always came together either at a restaurant or uh, in a big boardroom. And, uh, but we never missed a beat. And instead, in fact, instead of meeting monthly, we started meeting every week. Wow. Um, when it was shorter meeting, but it was great, particularly because we were working from home and so spread out to be, for us to be able to come together, you know, once a week and just connect on the status of things, particularly as they, they got a little crazy there at the beginning. Sure. So, uh, yeah. And security is obviously important. I know that you, uh, and we had talked about you moving from, you know, to biometrics and getting rid of passwords and MFA. At what point did that happen? And how important was that, that people understood why you were doing that and the importance? And has it now made you more secure getting rid of physical passwords? Well, first of all, it absolutely has made us more secure. Um, but I really put most of that onus on MFA. And uh, go back about three years, and we were getting compromised accounts in a couple dozen a week. And it, it was really causing our operations team, our service desk team, our security team, they, they, they were just churning sure. on the compromised accounts, doing the investigations, checking them out. You know. And we implement, so we finally just, we were going to implement MFA over a long period of time. We, we finally said, you know what? We need to stop everything, deploy MFA, and then go right. back to everything. And we did that. And we, we deployed 3,000 users in, in three weeks wow. uh, on MFA. And we had one compromised account over the next 12 months. Um, wow. So it, it just totally flipped uh, the organization in terms of our ability to service our, our customers, our internal customers, because we weren't chasing our tails on compromised accounts anymore. We were yeah. able to help people. So it was a really big deal. And obviously, we're way more secure now. <laughs> yes, that would be a nice benefit yeah. of the whole thing. So one of the problems that we hear continually from IT pros and organizations is all this is great, but Teams is always on. It's always in the background. It, you can now be working you know, at all hours of the day or night, you're always reachable. So how did you balance that? Because you're talking about now we're doing more meetings and we're doing this and we're not traveling, but how do you kind of create those boundaries and make sure that people have the time to get done what they need to do and that that work-life balance stays in place, which is harder to do 
when you're always online. Yeah, it is hard to do. And a couple of things that we have done. Uh, one is we've uh, adopted really across the company uh, focus time. And uh, this was something that started, I don't know, about six, six to 10 months ago that started mm -hmm. just kind of flowing through. And now if you see somebody and they've got a do not disturb flag on their, their, their account, odds are they're either presenting or they're in focus time. And if they're in focus time, leave them alone. And that's the message to everybody is, is do that. Another thing that we started doing was uh, shortening our meeting times uh, by five minutes to give we've, you that's that. something we've done too here at Microsoft yeah. and it's made a huge yeah. difference. So a 30 minute meeting is now 25 minutes um, because the reality when we were in the office and you had a 30 minute meeting, it was a 25 minute meeting. Sure. Because it takes a few minutes for everybody to get there. It takes a few minutes for everybody to, to transition from one place to another. Um, and this also provides that mental break, that break for your eyes to get take them off the screen, uh, go visit the, the the necessary room, and you know, and and then you know, kind of reset for that next conversation that you need to have. So those are just a couple of the things that we've done. Yeah. Are you looking to leverage more of those tools around the workplace analytics and now Viva and things like that that are helping to balance work and life and really look at individual mental health of the worker to ensure that we can reduce burnout and turn that. Is that a big area that you're now looking to focus on over, well, already are, and looking yeah. to continue to focus on in the near future? Yeah, we will absolutely continue to focus on it because it's it's a big deal, um, even when we come back from work from home, because that the way we used to work is not going to be the way we work going no. forward. Never, uh, ever. We may again. open the offices, we may have people back in offices, but uh, we're always going to have people joining remotely. And uh, we've already enabled uh, you know, uh, several of our conference rooms, including our executive conference room, uh, where our office of the chairman meets uh, as a Microsoft Teams room, um, so that they can uh, continue to have meetings the way they're used to having meetings, to continue to share uh, presentations or documents the way they become used to sharing those documents. Uh, with the, the least amount of impact to them. Uh, everybody's gotten used to using this format and sharing, just like I shared a little PowerPoint presentation with those screenshots. Mm -hmm. um, our executives got, have gotten used to working that way too. And when we come back to the office, we don't want a, to miss a beat. So we've enabled that there. And uh, I got to share that our, uh, our CEO, uh, when he first saw the setup, he said, this is so simple. Um, he said, how much did it cost? And when we told him how much it cost, he's so used to the old video conference room. Sure. And, you know, the, the, the big price and, tags associated with it. Yeah. And when we shared how much it cost, he said, wait a minute, that's a trip to New York and back. Yeah. And I said, yeah. For you, <laughs> <laughs> not yeah. for the rest of us that fly, you know, the economy. Yeah, exactly. Don't but it was it, a nice hotel. Yeah. <laughs> he was immediately uh, in his uh, CFO uh, mode with, "Wow, we could save a ton of money here." Uh, and this is this is I, the whole video conference game is just fundamentally shifted as a result of Teams and and the other products that are in the market now post pandemic. Bill Martin, thank you so much for joining us today. I want to encourage everybody to also check out the case study that Bill participated in with AEG. There's some additional really great information on why Microsoft Teams and how they got there along that journey. Really great stuff. And again, I want to thank him and, and his whole team at AEG for joining us today. That's it for this week's show. I'm really excited about our next guest on our show on June 8th. It's going to be Mainstream Renewable Power, a company out of Ireland that is doing some really amazing things to help the planet and leverage Microsoft Teams to do it. So can't wait to see you. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Stephen Rose. This has been Inside Microsoft Teams. We'll see you soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.